Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. You find Ecclesiastes 3 and verse number 1. If you'll stand with me, if you're physically able, and we'll read this portion of Scripture tonight. For those of you uh, hippies, the birds didn't come up with this song. <laughs> this is from Scripture. <laughs> Amen. Ecclesiastes 3, verse number 1, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again very much for your word. Lord, we, honestly, we ought to be excited about the burden for the Bible that these other countries have. Lord, please help us to have that fire burning within us. Lord, we, the choir just sang this evening, Set my soul afire. Please help us to be a fire for your word. Help us understand what is being said here. And Lord, help us to please make application. Please help me to be clear in, in what we're trying to get across. Lord, certainly we don't want it to be our personal interpretation. We want it to be yours. So please give clarity and direction. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Anybody got a watch on tonight? Yeah, me too. Because we're driven by this thing called time. I got to be here at a certain time, I start work at a certain time, I get off at a certain time, I know what time lunch is, yeah. I know when my break times are, and I know what time my favorite programs, or I know what time the sporting event comes on uh, television. We're just run by time, it seems like, and so much of our society, really so much of our world is driven by this thing we call time. We're paid by how much time we work. Right? Um, we, we set appointments for a certain time. We know how to watch the, the, the clock and we know when, how many minutes until we get out of class. <laughs> uh, how much longer until I get out of work? How much longer until I get to get out of work and, man, leave this crummy job and sit in traffic for an hour? <laughs> we know how to tell time. We ask questions like, where did the time go? We say things like at funerals and we say, well, I guess it was just his time. We are just, we're surrounded by the concept of time. And once again, Solomon is giving his, his insight, his perspective on the, the vanity of mankind apart from Almighty God. And in the third chapter here of Ecclesiastes, he gives this admonition to you and to me to use our time wisely. He's been looking at work and the things that we do and our pursuits and our efforts, and we've talked about that in chapter number one. And again, he kind of goes into more detail in chapter number two. And, and so all of these things, he says, man, I worked hard and it didn't gain me anything. I was just a party animal and it didn't gain me anything either. And so now he's shifting his focus to this, this concept of time. And in fact, that word is specifically used in chapter number 3, 28 different times. It's just amazing how Solomon could see how we are just ruled and driven by time. You think time is given to you by God? It should, because it is. 
I've been given time. In fact, Moses would write in Psalm 90, in, in uh, uh, Psalm 91, he writes about this concept of life and of time, and he says, So, Lord, help us to number our days. Help us to redeem the time. Help us to be good stewards of the time, Lord, that you give to us. He sets the mark for how many breaths you will take. How many heartbeats your heart is going to give out. He knows exactly how much time you have left. He knows what you're doing with your time. He knows what you're doing when you waste your time. And so we make these choices every day about what we do with our time. I decide tomorrow. I'm going to make decisions based on what I want to do or what I need to get done. And it's all based on this concept of how much time do I have to get these things done? You ever said this? There's just not enough hours in the day. Well, oftentimes it's because we're terrible stewards of our time. And we're just, we've crammed our schedules with so much stuff that we don't have any time to rest, to come apart. So instead we literally come apart. We fall apart because we didn't take some, some time. Why is it that time seems to drag when I'm at work, but when I'm on vacation, time goes faster than it ever has before? Why was, when I was growing up, why did I say, man, it just seems so slow. Why, I want to hurry up and be an adult. And then I became an adult. It's like, wow, where'd the time go? Every year just goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Do you know that it's June 18th already? Wow. I just got used to writing 2018 on checks. <laughs> well, not 18, but 17. <laughs> See, I'm so far ahead of time. I'm just in a, on a mission to just go faster and faster and faster and faster. So God in His perfect will has given us the, the free will to choose how we use the time that He's given to us. I have the same number of seconds in my day that you do. My day's not any shorter or any longer than yours is. How do I then use those seconds? How am I ministering those seconds for the cause of eternity? And I want us to, to pay close attention here. In fact, look at verse number one once again. I just want to point this out. And I, 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 we'll just kind of jump in here and, and I won't be too long again. We'll just kind of introduce it tonight and, and finish it next Sunday evening. But I think that every one of us needs to use our time wisely, as Solomon says here, by fearing the Lord. If I fear the Lord, I'll be a better steward of my time. Now, not afraid necessarily, but reverencing the Lord because I know that every breath that I have is given from Him. Every moment of my day is given by Him, and so I need to use my time wisely. Well, what's going to help me to do that? Well, Solomon says in verse 1 of chapter number 3, I need to understand God's prerogative in giving me time. Notice what he says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. Now notice the perspective. Again, he says the same words, under the heaven. So Solomon is looking out at under the heaven, just what he can see, and he says, everything has a season. There's just this continual season and cycle to life, and it just never, 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 never stops. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, I can't help but read verse number 1 and understand what perspective Solomon is giving to us, the under-the-sun perspective, under the heaven, but also realize, again, that I have to be thinking that, okay, though there is a, a season for everything on earth and there's a purpose for every, every moment of every day that God gives to me, there is soon coming a, a time, if we want to use that term, where I won't be concerned about time. It's called eternity, where I will get to live with my heavenly Father forever. Praise the Lord, I'm looking forward to that day when I don't have to say, oh, what time is it? Because I'm running late for whatever. I won't be running late up there. <laughs> There's no appointments to make there. And so just 
again, it's a reminder to us, okay, under the heaven, in the life that you and I live right now, there's a season. There, there, there are seasons, there are cycles of life, understand that. There's a time to every purpose under the heaven, but think, okay, but God who has put all of this together is trying to get me also to understand that it's not just about the time here and now, it's about time for eternity. And how am I investing my minutes here so that I might gain rewards to give back to him up there? And so in verse number one, Solomon begins in, in this third chapter of this book of regrets by noting the rights of God to work in our life. He's been on this quest for happiness, and, and Solomon has, has observed that God is the one who controls what happens in both my personal life and in the world in general. For everything that happens to us, there's a God-appointed time for it to occur. We would say the, the phrase, and it's a, a simple phrase, but it just helps us to understand, every fiery, fiery dart from Satan, from the devil, is father-filtered. He knows already the areas where the devil's going to try to attack me and where my temptations are going to come and what's going to come in my day. He already knows all of those, those issues and struggles and hurdles that I'm going to have to face as I go about my day. So doesn't it make sense then, if God has that ability to know those things, doesn't it make sense for me to start my day asking Him for wisdom and direction to, to go about my day? I would think so. Before my feet hit the ground as I bring them out of my bed, I ought to be asking Him and saying, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to face today, but you do. You're, you're much greater than I am. You know what will happen to me today. And so, Lord, help me today to take advantage of opportunities that you bring my way. Lord, help me today to be a good steward of both good things and things that I would consider to be obstacles or struggles or trials. Lord, help me to see how I might learn from those things as well. Because if I don't have that perspective, if I'm just looking under the sun, then I'm going to look at things, for example, like traffic jams. As a, a what a, this is ridiculous. Seriously. Why do I have to, st why is this person in the fast lane going 45? Why are you doing that? But I can't see the obstacle in the road that God's keeping me from hitting. I can't see the wreck that happened, but because God delayed me wherever I was before, that He kept me safe from those things. See, I can't see that until I am able to watch it or, or notice it with my own eyes. And I have to understand that time isn't necessarily just under my control. God has a prerogative in my life, and He is moving and working in my life to bring me to where He wants me to be. For everything that has happened in history, or that will happen in time to come, God has appointed and set a time for it to take place. Now, are you saying that God ordains evil? No, I'm not saying that. I do believe that God allows evil to take place. And God allows a certain time for it to take place. But God's not ordaining or saying evil needs to, to happen right here. He's allowing that to happen. And that's a whole nother huge discussion on decrees of God and all of that that we're not even going to get into tonight. But understand, God has a prerogative to move and work in my life and in the, the, the history of mankind. Do you think that God was working behind the scenes in time past to bring about His Son? You should. The Bible says, in fact, that's exactly what He did in Galatians chapter number 4 and verse number 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might be made, or we might receive rather, the adoption of sons. And so God is working and moving and directing and withholding and allowing all of these events to take place and bringing about leadership and direction and wars and rumors of wars, allowing all those things to happen so that at the exact right time, His Son would come on the earth. See, He's, he's moving on our behalf. We need to understand that. 
God has every right to bring about things or not bring about things in our lives. It's, it's His choice to allow or not allow things to happen in our world. And our only response to that should be to honor or reverence. We would use the word fear the Lord. I ought to reverence Him and say, Lord, I don't understand why you're doing this, but I understand you have the ability and the opportunity, and you know, you knew before it happened, you knew while it was happening, and Lord, you know the effects after you let it happen and why you're bringing it about. And so, Lord, I'm going to trust you in those things. And so Solomon says, to everything, there's a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. So I need to understand God's prerogative, and then I need to understand God has a plan for my life. And here's where we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up for this evening, but beginning in verse number 2, Solomon goes into, and, and through verse number 8, there's 14 different times that are listed there. There's 14 pluses and there's 14 minuses. You know what that adds up to? <laughs> Zero. And so he gets to the end of all of this list, this poem that he gives beginning in verse number 2 and ending in verse number 8, and he says, okay, there's, there's a positive here and a negative. And all of that encompassing in the middle portion, all of that is, look at verse number 9, what profit hath he that worketh in that he, wherein he laboreth? I've seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. In other words, I've seen all of these people. In fact, I used to be one of them that just, there, there's all of these times and I've got to get this done in this time and I didn't realize or have the proper perspective that God is moving and working and instead of trusting Him, I tried to manipulate time in my favor. I used time that God gave to me to try to gain things for myself and to try to serve self rather than serving God. And Solomon says, if I don't realize that, there's no profit. It's just, okay, I plant the corn and then I harvest the corn and I enjoy it, but sooner or later that corn stalk's going to die and I'm going to have to pull it up. And guess what happens next season? i got to do the whole thing over again. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. Right? Uh, verse 2, a time to be born, a time to die. If you're born did, you will die it also. It's just that's how life goes. Silly illustration to finish off. We have had some dogs um, in the time of both of our families. And um, one thing I'm not real big on, and forgive me, if you're a dog lover, I'm not against you, I'm for you, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of money on saving the life of a dog. That's just me. I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars to put a dog on life support. I'm, I'm not personally going to do that. Now, if you want to, that's fine. But eventually, sorry to say, Bowser is going to take his last breath. And so all that I can do and everything that I can try to do to, to try to make Bowser's life better and to ease their pain and, and try to help their sufferings and comfort them and give them the foods that I should never have given them like chocolate and all of that stuff. He's going to croak. Guess what? So are you. Well, Pastor, are you saying we shouldn't take care of our body? No, that's not what I'm saying. This is a temple. I'm supposed to take care of it. And quite honestly, I get convicted because I'm not taking care of mine as well as I should. We ought to take care of the life that God has given to us. But eventually, it's not just about this life. This life leads to the next. And so what am I doing with the breaths God gives to me? Am I redeeming them? Or am I just wasting them so I get to the end of my life and it's like, well... He was a good worker. Well, he was funny. <laughs> well, he was a good employee. He, you know, he was a good co-worker. Is that what I'm living for? Accolades and so people can say at the end of my life, well, he was a great guy and I really enjoyed him. Or am I living my life so that even if no one came to my funeral, in heaven there's rewards because of what I've done for the Savior instead that I can just give back to Him. And that's what Solomon is trying to get us to understand is, listen, 
I had all kinds of time, and I wasted it. I had wisdom and knowledge and, and resources, and all of it was for naught because I just took time for granted. I didn't use it to my benefit as God gave it to me. So as we get into it in next week, think about, even this week, I want you to think, Lord, what am I doing with my time? You've given it to me. And some of you have had miracles happen in your life and God has extended your life. What are you doing with those breaths? What are you doing with those heartbeats that God has given to you? Are you living for self? Are you living for the things on earth? Just biding your time? Or are you living for the Lord? Don't live under the sun. Live with a perspective above the sun. See, that's where I'm headed. That's where I want to live during my time here on earth, is live in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, because that's what He's enabled me to do. Let's pray. Lord, thank You very much again for the Bible. You've set up our world, Lord, to be based on time. And we have watches on our wrist, our cell phones, that measure the very rotation of the earth. They give us what time it is. And people get into church and they look at their watches and see what time it is and they get to work and they see what time it is. And we're so focused on, on time, time, time. Lord, help us to be focused on what we're doing with our time. Lord, when we're at work, we ought to be working, being a good steward, being a good employee. And Lord, when it's time to rest, then help us to do that. When you give us opportunity to be with our family, Lord, help us to take advantage of those things. Lord, when you bring someone across our path that we get to witness to, then help us to use that time wisely and not waste it. Lord, you've given many in our church opportunity to serve, time to serve, just to, even this past week. Thank you for the time that they gave to you to do that. Lord, we understand that's the greatest thing that we could do. So, Lord, this week, help us to be focused on our time. Help us to be thinking, be thoughtful about the minutes, the seconds that we spend. And Lord, we'll be careful to thank you for the help that you give. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Christ is your personal Savior. The most, I guess I'll say the greatest use of your time you could ever give is understanding you're a sinner reading for yourself what God has said in His Word and understanding you can have eternal everlasting life and then placing that faith in Christ and Him alone for salvation. It's the best use of your time you'll ever, you, you'll ever have. So tonight, I know we're mostly a, a church crowd, but I want to give opportunity. If there's someone here tonight that doesn't know for sure that they're saved, just raise your hand long enough for me to see it, put it right back down. Preacher, you pray. I don't know for sure that I'm saved. Anyone at all? Preacher, pray. I, I'm not certain I'm saved. And whether you believe it or not, God sits in heaven. He is real. He loves you. He's given you life and breath. He's given you His Son for salvation. So Christian, then what about you and me? How do we use our time? However the Lord speaks... In just a moment, I'm going to pray. We'll stand to our feet. We'll have a time of invitation. Opportunity for you to come and confess, agree with God about your life, about time. To ask for wisdom about, Lord, help me to use my time better. Whatever the Lord's spoken, I'll give you opportunity to respond. Lord, please help during the time of invitation. Thank you again for the Bible. And we just kind of dove right in and just got an introduction to it. But Lord, please help us understand the importance of time. Time is drawing short on this earth. There's, there's opportunities you're giving to us, so please help us to take advantage of them. And Lord, we'll thank you for the help. If there's someone here again, Lord, that isn't saved, pray that they might come forward. Remove any doubt or fear or embarrassment. Lord, help them to get that settled tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet if you would. If you're able, hymn number 160, 160. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. We'll just sing first word of the first verse, if the Lord has spoken to your heart, you need to come. Obey the Lord and come. <laughs>